I'm going to give some quick tips of how to memorize some family unit kanji. Sometimes the kanji will have actual radical meanings that will connect to a kanji, and other times they're just kind of fun stories. So hopefully you'll get a lot out of this, and I'll make it short and snappy. So the first kanji in front of you is the family kanji, which we should know now in your studies as ka zoku. And ka zoku is made up of two kanji. The upper part of the ka of kazoku is the rooftop, so this means the house. You can see a chimney right on the top there of that roof. And then the right side kanji is a tribe, and it has the actual radical of an arrow inside the kanji for tribe. So you can think of that as your house tribe or your family. The next two are father and mother. Father, you could almost look at it as like some like the parts of a, a cheek or something like that with a mustache coming underneath the mouth or something in that sort of a way to make a father-like figure. And this one right here, not to get too graphic, but you could think of it as a Picasso version of breasts um, on its side there. Um, but this is the mother kanji on the right. So that's father, chichi, and mother, haha. This one here, um, I always thought of it as the little devil horns on the top of my little brother. My little brother was very nice, but um, if you think of your devilish little brother, you might have the idea of oto oto, oto uto, oto oto, for little brother. Um, let's go on to Big Brother. Big Brother is the actual radical of a mouth on legs. So if you think of your brother always spouting off what he knows, um, a big mouth walking around on legs, that would be Ani. Now, with older sister, we have a very important radical on the left, which is the female radical. And the right side is actually composed of the city kanji. So these two components of female in the city there, maybe think of the older sister going off and doing some work or something like that in the city. We have ane, ane. Sounds very much like ani, but different pronunciation there. Whereas little sister also has the radical for female. But here I always thought of this as the younger sibling wearing a little skirt or a dress on the bottom that looks a little bit different than the one we just talked about with the city radical over here. And this would be imoto, imoto for younger sister. Now note that the kanji for older, sis, older brother, younger brother together are two separate kanji, not radicals, two separate kanji that make up a word that means siblings. Now, siblings can just be older brother, younger brother, brothers, but it also includes sisters. Whereas the older sister, younger sister kanji, put together as a new word with two separate kanji building a new word, is read shimai, and that word is only for sisters, but it's similar in composition to older brother, younger brother, kyodai. All right. Now, let's look at this one. The right side of the word for parents, which is pronounced ryoshin, ryoushin, I think gives away the kanji. So, if you remember from our Nichoku routine, this upper kanji here is the Kanji we learned to mean stand, as in kiritsu or tatte kudasai. And below that is a tree, which you know from mokuyobi. So you think of someone standing on a tree with an eye on legs, just like we had for older brother. And the eye on legs together on that right side is the kanji to see or to watch or to look at. So you can have your parents standing up 
on a tree looking out over you. And that would be the right side kanji there for parents. In fact, the right side kanji is the word for parent. Uh, ryo is a kanji that means both. So that is what's used for both parents, literally. Ryo shin. All right. Now, some basic ones. We actually just talked about this with older brother, or sorry, older sister, younger sister. But this is the single kanji for female, onna. Now, if we take that idea of onna, but we combine it with a different kanji, this kanji in the left here is the word used in a compound to mean head or lead, kind of like uh, the head teacher of a school would be the principal, and you'd use that same kanji for it. By itself, it can also mean the adjective long. But here we're going to think of it in the context of head and head female. Now, a head female sounds like it might be someone like your mother or a grandmother, but really it, what it means is the oldest born female in a family. So they have a special reading um, and a special title they are given, and that's referred to as cho jo. Be careful the pronunciation here. It's a long u on cho u, but not on jo. So it's pronounced cho jo. And that's reserved for the first born, first born female of the siblings in a family. As opposed to cho nan. This kanji has a radical that is rice field under most circumstances, but when it's used in combinations with other kanji, it often takes on the meaning more of, of brain over power. You might remember this from some earlier kanji that we had studied as well, that this kanji, which looks like a katakana ka, is an actual power kanji. Do not confuse it with the sword. Remember, the sword does not poke through the top there, and mine kind of did there. That's a sword as opposed to power. So that difference does make a big difference. So this is the male kanji. So like head female, cho jo, we also have a head male, cho nan, and that would be the firstborn male in a series um, of, of family members. Okay? All right. I think that gives us a good basis for quick memory for much of the kanji. Um, actually, let me pull over and make sure over here there isn't something else that we should talk about. Um, in your assessment, you also have the single kanji for watashi. Watashi is a very common word that we've been using since the first week of class, as you know, is I. Um, some people think of this as maybe a sharp, pointy nose. And if, I don't know if you remember this cultural part of uh, Japanese, but when Japanese refer to themselves, they refer to themselves by pointing to their nose as opposed to their chest. So I thought of that as watashi is pointing to me, watashi. And that's an image of a nose there on the right. Um, you might guess that this would be another way of saying mother because it has the mom kanji plus the parent kanji in a similar way that this would be father. They're going to have different readings, which I'm going to go over in a separate video, but that's what that would mean. Um, if you're wondering about these, they are not in your assessment, but you might understand them as also relationship between what we talked about with the lead male. This is what would be known as the second or the next by kanji male, so it's the second born male, read jinan, or jijo, that would be the second born female. And then similarly, you'd also could have a third born male, that'd be called sannan. These two are on your assessment. This one and this one were on the initial video that I had went over with uh, relationships in family with inner, inner circle and outer circle. So this one's pretty easy to understand because it is inside. You can just see that this person, almost like a person, is sitting inside of this space. So that's referred to as the uchi, or inside, as opposed to soto, or outside. If you're getting to know your katakana, this looks like the katakana ta, followed by the katakana to. And if you think of that as the outsides of the set of the ta, chi, tsu, te, to, katakana range, you have the outside ends of that set. That would be the kanji that builds up, the radicals that build up the kanji for outside. All right, let's call it uh, a lesson. That's 10 minutes, which is enough. Thanks so much.